and welcome back to another episode of Richmond Real Talk, where you can find real teens having real talk about real stuff. This is your host, DJ Silver, currently recording here at the Shoreline Teen Center. And today I'm joined with my very own co-worker, Marlena. Marlena, why don't you tell everybody hello? Hi. <laughs> and tell everybody how long you've been working with us. I've been working here since uh, late May. Late May? Yeah. So we're fairly new, fairly new. But she's been a part of our program for a long time. Definitely longer than I've been working here because I don't remember her being a part of my program. And today we are joined with Isabella, our teen that is going to be coming in talking with us today. Isabella, why don't you tell them hello? Hello. Also tell them a little bit about yourself, what school you go to, what age you are. I'm 16. I go to Sherwood High School. You like being 16? 16's all right. I like it. It's cool. Yeah. Is it the best age you've been so far or what's your favorite age that you've been so far? I'd say 16. This has probably been like, this has been a good year for me. Has it? You're a sophomore in high school? So I'm going to be a junior next year. You're going to be a junior? Are yeah. you looking forward to being a junior? Yeah. I mean, wow. I'm nervous because of SATs and stuff, but you know, yeah, I'm that's, excited. That's I'm excited. One more year ahead. Mm -hmm. You're already halfway through your high school career. Yeah. It's crazy. Do you feel like it go by slow or fast? Fast. Really fast? Yeah. Are you ready to start your junior year? Yes. You feel prepared? I feel prepared. All right. Cool. Cool. So... <laughs> With that being said, we are going to jump into our first part, which is the quote of the day. And usually I'm the one to go ahead and say the quote and pick out the quote and everything. But, you know, I kind of want to switch it up today. So since we have new blood that's officially here on the podcast, I'm going to have my coworker Marlena instead read the quote of the day. Okay. If you wish to see the truth, then hold no opinions for or against anything. To set up what you like against what you dislike is the disease of the mind. When the deep meaning of things is not understood, the mind's essential peace is disturbed to no avail. That comes to us from the third patriarch of Zen. Um, this is a beautiful scripture um, that I really, really like because it kind of describes how if you live too far one way or another, you can get out of balance and um, hate is easier, easier found around extremism. So yeah. <laughs> I like that, I like that a lot. And how did you come across this quote? Where did you find it? So my parents are pretty cool people. They, uh, in the 80s, they used to make tapes, like cassette tapes, and they, um, they stumbled across this scripture. And they decided to recite the whole thing. And the whole thing's really long. Go look it up. Um, and so they recited the whole thing. They alternated each other speaking. And they recorded it on cassette tapes. And they gave those cassette tapes out to all their friends and family for Christmas one huh. year. That's actually a really cool Christmas gift. And you said, I'm sorry, I might butcher this. You said it was the third scripture of Zen. The third patriarch of patriarch Zen. Patriarch of Zen. Okay. Yeah. So that has a... Oh man, I'm, I almost don't want to say it because I want to sound like an idiot on the podcast. That almost <laughs> is that is that of Asian origin? Then where it's Correct. coming from? Okay, okay, that makes sense because balance is really really big, especially in a lot of ancient Asian cultures like Taoism, Taoism, yeah. and Zen. So yeah, I really like that. Do you have any thoughts towards it, Isabella? It is really deep. I know. <laughs> nice. It's good. I like it. It's so what do you think about having that balance then? What do you think about balance in general? What, what, what are some things that come to mind? When I think of balance, well, I mean, I'm a Libra, and the <laughs> sign of being a Libra is balance and scales. And I think it's sometimes I've struggled in my life sometimes at times where to find balance, and I think everyone does, but I've... Yeah, balance is important. I'm still... I'm probably my whole life going to be working towards balance. I don't think I'm ever going to accomplish full balance. But, yeah, I'm better than I have been. I've been... I feel like I have a pretty addictive personality, and I can get addicted to things, and it's, like, sometimes hard to get away from that. But, yeah. What are some of the things that you are trying to be balanced with, just as an example? I'm trying to be balanced with um, with my work. I can, I have, I'm very, I was raised with people that work 
nonstop, and I have always been raised with, like, my mom, she's had, like, three jobs in the past, and she's, like, a workaholic, and I feel like I can, that I have a tendency to, like, overdo things and drive myself to insanity, but... Yeah. So you're just trying to find a balance to where you're not going to drive yourself. To yeah, just to right? where I okay. can manage. Okay. Well, that's not necessary. I mean, an excess of anything is not good for you, but it is good to hear that 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 work ethic and trying to keep that contained. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, is is something you know if that's one of the addictions that you have that it's it's a more positive addiction as opposed to like the reverse being lazy yeah, and trying exactly. to develop yeah. that work ethic because it's a lot yeah. harder to try to well I feel like it's hard either way but at least on one side you're being productive yeah I mean yeah. <laughs> even if it gets damaging yeah no yeah. it's good to be in the middle I'd say yeah yeah it's, that's that's very true <laughs> and I think all of us kind of struggle with all of us do struggle with balance. I think every single person mm -hmm. struggles with balance. Yeah. And, you know, we want an excess of certain things. Um, and I know we emphasize about being happy and things being good all the time. But mm -hmm. sometimes in order to it's appreciate not. the good and the happiness, we have to experience some of the darker things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I know that's been very, very true for me. Uh, so I definitely think that that's very, very influential. And I actually really, really like that quote. Uh, I do know that that scripture can go a lot longer. Oh, yeah. all, them Asian scriptures don't play. Yeah. <laughs> they really, yeah. They, and they, they, ain't, they ain't short, but they are sweet sometimes. Yeah. All right. Well, with that being said, we are going to go ahead and jump into part two of the podcast, which is going to be the topic of the day. Now, when we were talking about the topic of the day, I believe it was last week, last Saturday, right, Isabella? Were you here last Saturday? Yeah. Or was it last Friday? It was last Friday. It was last Friday? Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. The days are no, moving you're good. together. I can't. Yeah. I don't even remember what day it is in yeah, summer. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I know. It's, it's terrible. Yeah. All this mellow heat got us delirious. Totally. So, um, and I know that you, what you wanted to talk about was economics. I did. In economic class, which is really surprising because most teens that come in here don't want to talk about economics. Because yeah. then they feel like they're back in school. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. Totally. But we're going to switch it up and we're going to talk about economics from more of an emotional and psychological standpoint as opposed to just learning about the numbers. Is that correct? Yeah. Because we're not going to be talking yeah, about breaking I, down I don't how, yeah, uh, how like our that. economy works. I and have stuff. no math. Genius. Yes. No math. I, I'm just... terrible at math. <laughs> I don't even know what two plus two equals. <laughs> so, with that being said, why don't you go ahead and jump into some of the things that you want to talk about? I remember that last time we talked you brought up the fact of kind of your upbringing and kind of mm -hmm. where you and your family comes from so why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about that and what what kind of got you to want to talk about economic class well i am very privileged in the sense that i come from a middle class background i mean when i was really like younger growing up we were pretty poor we lived in kind of a not great area that was pretty seedy but we've uh, my family has I'm so lucky to have parents that have really worked their way up and have my parents have strong eth work ethic and I think that and they save money okay being cheap can get you a long way I know so many people that are horribly in debt Mm -hmm. And they make more money than both my parents. My mom does not have a college degree, okay? Yeah. She didn't have money to go to college. She just saved a lot of money her whole life. And she grew up with a father who one week they had money, one week they didn't. You know, he would waste all their money away. He would buy boats and things that they couldn't afford and he'd get laid off from his job one week and then he'd have a job the next week. It was very unbalanced, which is very relating to... He was, he was buying boats? He was buying boats. Ooh. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, I'll clean your bank account for sure. Yeah, exactly. And he's a smoker too, which smoking's yeah. not cheap. No, no. It's a bad habit. It's not, especially if you're going through like a pack a day. Yeah. Living about easily ten dollars a day, seven days yeah. a week. That's seventy dollars a week times oh, yeah. four. That's a lot of money. Totally. That's a lot of money just on smoking. Totally. 
Okay. And are your are your parents they're originally are they originally from Seattle? Or are they originally from the Seattle area? My dad was grew up in Tacoma and my mom grew up in uh, Minnesota. Oh wow, Minnesota. Yeah. Okay. What and made what made her decide to come to Seattle? Her aunt um was living in Seattle and she uh my mom was staying with my aunt for a while. I don't know exactly why, but she came out and lived with my with her aunt, my great aunt, and uh, she was working at um, she was working at a hotel. She was waitressing at a hotel where she met my dad, and oh, okay. <laughs> they both were, you know, waitressing, which isn't great money, but they met and they fell in love and they got married, and then seven years later they had me when they were more financially stable because they didn't want to have kids when they didn't they couldn't really like support afford it yeah, afford it. yeah. Mm-hmm. kids aren't cheap no oh. <laughs> i hear it every day from my father how, <laughs> and it's just for me not even all my siblings yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's true that's true so that's 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 interesting and both your parents come from humbling beginnings is that correct or did they no, come from no my class? dad's different okay, okay. my dad <laughs> He, uh, he grew up, uh, with, uh, he grew up in, like, a broken home, so, like, his parents were divorced, but his dad was, like, a rich lawyer, but my dad didn't see any of that money. He didn't get money from his dad. He, so he, you know, he grew up with his single mom, so. Just having to fend for himself. Yeah. And, you know, he was kind of into, he had some problems, and he kind of, for a while wasn't going the right path if that makes sense like he was involved in bad things and dangerous dangerous things and kind of hung out with low lowlifes I know that sounds like rude but he did and you know he I think it was my mom that kind of set him straight because my mom came from a very different background than he did mm-hmm. but yeah but um where was I going with this? <laughs> um, there's there's so many dynamics that goes into economic class. Oh yeah. And finances and money. Yeah. And it's very 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 complex. I know one of the number one issues in our country, um, and maybe it's kind of gotten better in some ways, has been race, mm-hmm. but. Mm-hmm. One of the things, and that kind of, that does correlate with economic class, but at the Mm -hmm. end of the day, the only thing that really matters the most in this country, the only color that matters the most in this country is green. And I know that's been told a lot. Um, At the end of the day, it doesn't necessarily 100% matter what background, ethnicity, demographic that you come from. If you do have a certain amount of wealth, and economic stability that can get you a lot of things that normally you wouldn't be able to and get you a lot of prestige and the way that people look at you. Definitely. So I know that that's a really, really big thing. You know, for me, just personally speaking, I do come from a background where we didn't have a whole lot. And I'm not going to go too much into depth about my history. But for me, I was at the very poor economic class um minimum wage you know not a whole lot of money there was a a lot of times where we uh, more times i can remember where we we didn't have a lot growing up um and it you can go two ways with that you can grow up realizing okay i didn't have a lot growing up so when i do have money and i do start learning how to budget and how to finance um i don't want to go back to where i'm at and because i'm not used to having this i know how to hold it and keep on to it and and learn how to budget, how to finance, what I should spend money on, what I can go without, want versus needs, all those type of things. But there are some people, a lot of people actually that come from a similar background to where I come from, and they're not used to having money, so they have Mm -hmm. spending problems. They just spend and spend and spend, and it's like, do you have the money for it now? Or they're living paycheck to paycheck, not necessarily because they have to. Um, It's just because they really don't know how to handle their money. And a lot of that comes from just not being taught that or maybe just not having the discipline for it. Because when you go your whole life without and then now you're with, 
Yeah. It's it's really really it's an addictive feeling. It's a oh, very yeah. addictive feeling, you know. Um totally. It's 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 I mean, in, in essence, if you don't have anybody else to take care of and you're only kind of taking care of yourself and you get this money, you're spoiling yourself. Spoiling yourself is good. Yeah. Until you go into debt. Yeah. And then you mm-hmm. lose everything that you have. Yeah. And then that's when it's not that much fun. So Marlena, let me ask you where first off, what what kind of background do you have in economic class do you have and then your parents and then how do you see economic class and how it kind of plays into the this infrastructure and stature of our country okay cool um i know it's a loaded question i asked like three (laughs) things in one (laughs) yeah no it's fine so i've kind of seen multiple different levels of wealth uh growing up so when i was first born my parents had been married for 10 years before I was born. I'm an only child. Okay. Um, I've lived my entire life in Richmond Beach. So for me, growing up, um, I at first was unaware of how wealthy my parents were. Um, I had no idea. I just didn't. Because um, I was a young kid, I was just unaware of Yeah, it. you don't have to worry about finances. When you're I don't trying. have to worry about it, exactly. And... Um, but the fact that I didn't have to worry about it shows you a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, because some little kids do have to worry about it, you know? Um, but so growing up, I went to a private school in the beginning of my life. Kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade. And it was ten grand a year to go there. <laughs> it's a lot of Wham. money. That is a lot of money. Yeah. And that with the addition of the fact that my dad did not know how to budget, um, added to, um, added with the fact that my mom quit her job when I was born to raise me, put us into debt, (laughs) Mm -hmm. like knee deep into debt. And so we had been doing fine. And then all of a sudden, boom, debt. I, randomly chose to quit going to this school and I went to Syrie Elementary in fourth grade public school because I wanted to walk to school. Syrie, that's um that's still in Richmond Beach, right? Yeah. It's like yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like kinda hidden within the yeah. neighborhoods. Okay, yeah, okay. Totally. Um so I went there and my parents were like, Oh, thank goodness, you know, like <laughs> ten, yeah. grand, ten grand a year we can save. <laughs> that's a lot of money. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so after that, I started to become aware of how much money we had because we, we became lower middle class to the point where we sometimes would have like 200 bucks for a a few weeks to live off of. And like, that's a lot more than some people have, but for our family, it was a lot less, <laughs> and it was hard. So sometimes we would have top ramen a lot, you know, for mm-hmm. a while, mm-hmm. because that's all we could afford to eat. <laughs> so that's interesting. So in order to stay in that middle class, you were struggling to stay in that middle class. Yes. And to keep that. Because of debt, like you said earlier, mm-hmm. um, because my dad would buy stuff. And um, because of my school that I went to, but mainly because he couldn't budget. That was the main reason, was because he couldn't it's, budget. Budgeting's it's so important. It's oh, yeah. so important. Especially in a country like ours where it's based on debt. I mean, we're a debt-based yes. economy. Yeah. That's how it's we're like, able oh, to accumulate which our wealth. credit card are you going to put that on? Exactly. I don't know. I have like 16. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of them are almost maxed out. So we will return to your scheduled programming shortly, while we are currently experiencing technical difficulties. And I'm still recording. All right, anyways, so continue. So after a while of being in debt, um, after a while of being in debt, we started to have more money because my mom took over the budgeting. 
And <laughs> she decided so, she had enough, huh? Yeah, she. I was to the point where she she didn't need to help me all the time. Um, I was old enough, so she was like, "Hey, you know what? I'm pulling us out of this." <laughs> Mm -hmm. And my dad let go and let her take control of the budgeting. And um, we started to do a little bit better. And um, fast forward till now, um, my dad has finally learned how to budget, <laughs> which is great. It's a very valuable it's life so lesson. It's so valuable. And I now have my own money, which is something that... I did not have for a very long time growing up and I was not the kind of kid who just asked for stuff. I only got stuff when I truly needed it. And so now that I have money, like you were talking about before, um, I, in the past year, I started treating myself oh. a whole lot, a whole lot. and. Um, recently in the past month I've gotten way more serious about it but I was spending a lot of money on clothes because I could and I never now you're not going into debt are you spending <laughs> all this money on clothes no um, no okay that's not honest. <laughs> but I didn't ever have cool clothes either so it was something that I just I really wanted to do and mm -hmm. I could <laughs> doesn't mean I should but I could mm -hmm. and so I did and um, but it got to the point where I felt so guilty about it and so I stopped and now I have been just saving my money and it's good <laughs> um, so it's really interesting because now my parents have a lot of money, um, more like they did before I was born even, mm -hmm. and um, it's it's a different it's it's such a interesting life to have where you know you have a lot of money and then you don't and then you do and then you know kind of I mean we're still we're considered middle middle class the whole time but. There is definitely an upper middle class and a lower middle class, mm -hmm. and we've been on both sides of it, and so it's an interesting place to be. I, yeah, I, I it well, it gives a lot of perspective. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, exactly. I feel like you learn and pick up a lot of perspective through it. Yes, I know that. I, I know that. It's it's tough even trying to stay in that middle class too, mm -hmm. you know. Like I I can relate a little bit because I've been, I've been all over the place throughout my life. Uh, sometimes I was living in what would be considered lower middle class. Other mm -hmm. times I was considered well, definitely lo uh, lower class, poor lower class. Um, and one of the things I realize is when you're trying to stay in that middle class and you don't have a lot of the funds and the finance and money with you it could tend to show it's more pronounced. Like for me, if I don't have a whole lot of money, but I was living in a certain place where no one really has money, then no one's really making fun of you for not having money because ain't none mm -hmm. of us have money. Exactly. We're all broke. Um, it was like that living in some of the places in California I was living at. It was like that living on the native reservations where they really don't have a lot. So we're all in the same boat where mm -hmm. we all don't have anything. Yeah. But when you go into that middle class, um, area or that you know that school that's located there is kind of different starts to become more pronounced and mm -hmm. you do start to realize certain things like you start to realize more of what you don't have as opposed to everything that you need yeah. um you know i remember going i remember going to school at this one elementary i went to so many different schools elementary schools middle schools and i remember one of the elementary schools i went to it was a really good elementary school even though it was a public school but I just remember going there and I saw like, le le I don't I don't know how it is now, but back in the day when I was in elementary school, Lunchables were the thing. If you had mm -hmm. the Lunchables, yes. that meant that your parents had money. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I remember kids yeah. would be coming in with Lunchables. They'd be coming in <laughs> with nice fancy like metal boxes, yes. uh, yes. lunch boxes, and had all this crazy stuff in there. Like they got all the snacks, all the chips, all the drinks mm -hmm. and everything. And it was like that on a habitual basis every day mm -hmm. out the week. And I remember I was, I did not want to go. Like I'd show up 
Paper bag. Yep. Yep. Yeah, paper yep, bag. I'd have parlay. like a tuna sandwich or like a peanut butter sandwich. Not even peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter sandwich, a hot pocket, you know, tortilla chips, maybe some Doritos if I was lucky. Not a whole lot. Um, yeah. but, but it was funny because sometimes I get made fun of sometimes. But then there are other times where a kid would look and be like, is that a hot pocket? I'd be like, yeah. They're like, I don't get hot pockets. Hey, I'll trade you this for that <laughs> yeah. hot pocket. I'll be like, all right, take it. You can take the whole hot pocket. I don't care. <laughs> um, but it was like that. And I remember um, emergency lunch, too, at elementary schools. Like, if you didn't mm-hmm. have anything, yep. of course, the school yeah, district doesn't yep. want their kids to go hungry. So they'll give the you something lunch. called emergency lunch. Mm-hmm. Right? But the thing was, is if you got the emergency lunch, then all the kids yeah. knew you were yep. struggling. So for me, as a kid, I was like, you know what? I'll just go hungry. I don't yeah, care. Exactly. I'd rather go hungry and say, like, I forgot then to get an emergency lunch and have all the kids like look and judge and this and that. But I yeah. think it's sad that it's like that. It's sad that you as a child, not an adult, not a teenager, but as a child would rather just go hungry yeah. than actually take free food. Yeah. That's still food. Shame that's going to Yeah, exactly. A lot of shame in it. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. a lot of insecurity in it. Yeah. And it's a really, it's a really sad thing, but that's one of the biggest things that's that's going on in today. I feel like actually it's always been really big. Oh yeah, it's yeah, always definitely. always been really big throughout our existence, and yeah, yeah. even more so now. I mean, it's it's yeah. really pronounced. I was yeah. I was when I went to school, the lunches that I got sent with to school were like like really nice food. Like mm-hmm. I would get sent home like sent to school like leftovers. That, those are the best. And my mom cooked because she stayed at home. Yeah. So I always had like really nice homemade home food, food yeah. always in thermoses and everything. And I was embarrassed to eat that because. Really? You were embarrassed that you're bringing home cooked meals yeah. to school? And so I remember I only ate lunch fourth grade, fifth grade, and sort of sixth grade. Mm-hmm. And then. My entire, the rest of my entire, my career, I did not eat, eat lunch. I never ate at school. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't eat breakfast. I wouldn't eat at school. And then I get home and I just eat. And I wouldn't stop yeah, eating until, I, until like I go to o'clock. sleep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's, that's a shame that sounds bad. So then let me ask this. As you, as you got older going into high school, mm-hmm. how did it? Were, were you more accepting then of the fact that you were struggling or at that point were you kind of getting out of the struggle and going more into the comfortability kind of getting out of the struggle a little bit um i do remember it was it was more something that i was aware of at that point um where i had been and like how much money that school was and you know, how much money my parents had, like, I actually knew those things at that point. Mm -hmm. And so things fell into place more. Um, It made sense. And it wasn't something that I would have been been able to understand until I was old enough. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, my parents didn't talk about it until I was old enough. And I remember um, once I did start making money, though, we had another, a rough time, um, like just a year ago, my dad got, um, fired wrongfully, but he Mm -hmm. got fired, um, from his job of 36 years. And that was really, really rough on our family. Um, because my mom doesn't work. My mom, she still, she never went back to Mm -hmm. working. And so we only had my dad's income. And so when he got fired, it was so hard on us. And we had just gotten out of debt, like just gotten out of debt. And so we were like, oh my God, we're gonna go back into debt. Like we did not want that to happen. So I started buying all of our groceries. Mm -hmm. And because I was the only one making money and I was making good money (laughs) too, Mm -hmm. babysitting. And so I yeah, remember, those nanny jobs I remember that. pay a lot. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize it. I was like, man, I might start nanny. Yeah, you're sleeping on that. Oh, I'd be, ter- I'd be terrible. <laughs> Definitely. I'd be such a bad nanny. Y'all see how I am, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, and and now we're doing okay again. So it's kind of just been like a constant yo-yo mm-hmm. with money. Mm-hmm. 
but that's how it is unfortunately it is mm -hmm. yeah. money comes and goes you yeah. go through you go through points where you're okay and you're yeah. comfortable you go through points where you're making more money than you really yeah. know what to do with that's why yeah. saving yeah like you saving, said yeah my is mom. one of the most important things if you can save yeah. between mm -hmm. 10 percent, 20 percent of your every paycheck if you can save in between that much money mm -hmm. you'll be okay savings huge yeah like Saving's i used huge. to be so embarrassed because my mom is like <laughs> i love her and i i love this about her now and i used to hate it but i was so embarrassed because she was she's like a notorious cheapskate she is so cheap because she grew up so unstable that she is so so cheap like <laughs> not mm -hmm. like every single penny counts mm -hmm. in her mind like mm -hmm. every single penny like I used to be embarrassed it does, it does. no it, it, she's right I mean I am lucky that I have been brought up with good values towards economics but mm -hmm. I was embarrassed growing up because I shopped at Goodwill you know I was Same. like oh my yeah like everyone made fun because like I went to Goodwill, and people were like, oh, you're a poor kid, and I was like, ugh, that's a... Yeah, See, that's what you shame. do is you adapt, though. You learn to look for the things that people dress in. Exactly. And then you find that stuff, mm -hmm. and then you fit in. Exactly. <laughs> so, for me, like, I did shop at Goodwill, but yeah. I eventually figured out what to, what to buy in order to fit in. Which Goodwill which do you, which good will you go to? The one in Edmonds. See, that's, that's, that's the hidden one. one. That's, a that's, nice one. that's the one Lawrence yep. goes to as well. He's like, man, just go to the one in Edmonds. That's they nice. actually got really nice stuff. Yeah. yeah. I've been to some really bad Goodwills. I also bought Edmonds is the best Meyer. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And if I was lucky, if we had money at that time, Target. Who? Tar yeah, Target is bougie. <laughs> okay, like, Target's yeah. bougie. Target's the bougie. <laughs> now it's so expensive. Wait, hold on. What about Walmart though? I never. No Walmart. No, was I don't. A little, my, it was a little too much. My parents don't my like parents Walmart because oh, okay. of the like yeah. how they treat the workers. Yeah. 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 But I've been to Walmart in upstate New York, mm. and that Walmart nice is crazy. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been to some rough WalMarts. Rough targets, rough yeah. Yeah. goodwills. I've been to some really Walmart's really creep me out. <laughs> yeah, Walmart's. I used to go to Walmart in Oakland all the time, next to the the mm. Oakland International Airport, and that one was like they was having swap meets in the parking lot. <laughs> mm. I was like, man, what's going on? Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, it's 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 hard coming f going through those financial woes. But there uh, are such great things that you can learn from mm -hmm. it. Exactly. Like learning how to save and how to budget and knowing yeah. where to where to go to. Even places like Goodwill got gems. Yeah. You know? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. They got, yeah, they got really good stuff there. Goodwill, yeah, right here. You got those here. pants from Goodwill? <laughs> now I only yeah. shop Goodwill because I think it's cool. Like my mom, <laughs> yeah. I hated it when I was younger, but now like... I'm like, yeah. Goodwill. Goodwill is a good all one. All the way. You can buy some cool jeans. And now, like, everyone's like, the whole, th the whole, I feel like I see this style a lot where people want to wear things that are kind of grungy and, like, look mm -hmm. kind of funky and stuff. Like, and well, that's, just buy it at the thrift store. Buy it at the Goodwill because they're selling it at, like, places like, like, really expensive places like Amber Crombie and Fitch for, like, $50 jeans that are ripped. Just mm -hmm. go to Goodwill and rip them yourself. Mm -hmm. you know? I don't understand the ripped jeans thing. Speaking as someone who has bought $50 ripped jeans. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Just go to Goodwill and rip up some jeans. Exactly. Yourself. Exactly. Because it is not worth it. Also, Did you get buyer's jeans. remorse when you bought the ripped jeans? Oh, no. I still wear them. I love oh, okay. Them. But I love ripped jeans. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Ripped jeans are actually really bad for your washing machine. So, you know what? Why are they bad for your Just washing machine? It. Well, because it, it just, it's just, it just is. It's just kind of... Oh, just... <laughs> it just is. Just, All right, just I don't, is. I'm not going to question it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's... It's definitely... Look, there's there's some good things that come from it, like going to there. I mean, I know for me, it was in phases. I was really excited when there would come times where I could, like, go shopping at the mall. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, my, the mall's a luxury. I was like, oh, my God, I can go to the mall and actually go to Foot Locker and everything. Yeah. But then there are other times where it's like, hey, sorry, we're going to have to go to Goodwill, Thriftway, and Ross. Yep, and even then, yeah. I'm like, okay, all right, cool. But it got a lot easier the older I got. You know, as a oh, kid yeah. and then middle school, it was really tough. By the time yeah. I was Kids in high school, yeah, by the time <laughs> I was in high school, I didn't really care. 
You yeah. Know, I, you know, peop, there's people that knew I got free lunch. But then again, my high school experience was different mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. even though I didn't have much, even in high school, um, I still had my own job. Actually, I had two jobs, so I was still making money. A lot of the money, similar to you, Marlena, I had to... I had to give to my family because my family was struggling. Mm -hmm. And the way they saw it is if you make money, then it's all our money. You know, if you have time, then it's all our time, which is good and bad at the same time. So a lot of my money would go to trying to help pay for my own stuff and help pay for my family. But even then, I I think even though I didn't have much, people still knew I had a future ahead of me because this was back when I was really big into playing sports and everything. And people thought I was going to make it big. So for me, it was like, hey, even though y'all know I ain't got nothing now, you know I'm going to go somewhere in life. So yeah. I don't have yeah. to worry too much about what y'all are thinking of me now. And uh, exactly. I was also I was also kind of bad as a kid. So I'm like, if you get to talking too much, then, you know, I might I'm going to get angry and some stuff's going to happen. <laughs> but what was crazy about it is because my mom is cheap as well. She's she's really, really cheap. You know, yeah. she's like that cheap Hispanic Puerto Rican woman. You know, we used to go shopping at the Dollar Tree all the time. Yeah. all the time i actually i was with my friend uh not too long ago we were gonna pick up some batteries and he thought the dollar tree is exactly a dollar he's so he had a dollar no. he's like it's gonna cost exactly a dollar. Yeah. I'm like, you do know there's taxes after that right i was like i guarantee it's gonna be a dollar oh eight he's like bro it's called the dollar store i'm like look dude i i know the dollar store <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be a dollar oh eight oh, sure yeah. enough it was actually a dollar ten yeah. And I, I had to tell him, I'm like, bro, I used to grow up going here. I got my, like, I got my toiletries from here. I got my school supplies from here. Yep. School supplies lasted maybe a month before they broke down. The colored pencils didn't even color. You yeah. you get a green colored pencil, it'll come out black. That's how yep. it was at the Dollar Tree. It was crazy. Yeah. But, you know, that's how my mom was. She was always about saving money, not having to go to, you know, more expensive places, you know, rather stay home and cook. You know, she was really about that. Mm-hmm. And she didn't come from much. But then on the flip side, I have my father, who also didn't come from much. Mm-hmm. He'd, he'd kill me if I was saying this right now because he doesn't <laughs> want people to know that. But my father also didn't come from anything at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you're talking about a family that came from Los Angeles and the rough part of Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. But even with my father, because he didn't have that, once he would get money, he'd just blow it. All, he just yeah, blow it all. Right quick. He, he yeah. blow it all. He didn't. You didn't know. Yeah, because you know it's like a rush. It's like, oh yeah. my gosh, I have money. Yeah, exactly. Like, and you have to catch up for stuff before, like yeah, debt exactly. before. He also had me at a young age, so it's like I got to take care of my kid for stuff I haven't been able to do. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's like as soon as he got money, he had to blow it all again. But you know, he also didn't know how to budget. He man loves mm-hmm. spending money. He'll find a reason <laughs> just to go out and spend some yeah. money. And I'm sitting here like, how do you? How do you even? You why why do you even have that? You know, he'll have like he live man he has thirty pairs of shoes. I don't understand. Thirty pairs of shoes. At all. And then he has another ten in the garage. I wear that the same pair used, of like, sandals yeah. every day from Costco. <laughs> okay. I spent ten ninety nine on them. Yeah, you're saving yourself a lot of money. Oh yeah, no. Or you know, if you're me, you got like foot problems, so you gotta wear like fancy but, oh, sneakers. Mm-hmm. That's unfortunate. Or like the orthopedic stuff. I have like hard insoles. plastic. Yeah. Like hard. Plastic. Does that feel comfortable at all? Oh, it does because oh, really? I need it. <laughs> Man, if I wore hard plastic in my shoe, I could. I have to, I'd wear, be hurting. I have to wear these shoes. I had somebody try to sell up. me some orthopedic stuff from my shoe, <laughs> and it was like the cheapest plastic. I yeah. literally feel like they just took a chunk of plastic and just like carved it out. It was like here is insoles, and I was looking, at it, I was like, how much are you trying for this? Like sixty. Yeah. It's like sixty for two. Like, yeah. I just took my mom's. <laughs> She's gonna be yeah. asking for it pretty no, soon. No, no, she gave them to me. Oh, like, okay, hey, okay. So, hey, Marlene, have you seen my uh, <laughs> my plastic insoles? They've been missing for quite a while. Yeah. 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 One of the benefits of like really saving money is sometimes life will like throw things at you. Like, I oh, yeah. had some effed up teeth, okay? I had to get braces, like, and mm-hmm. I had them for three years, and braces mm-hmm. are expensive. Mm-hmm. My mom had to get a huge surgery, and you know what? We could afford it because we were saving, really. We were being smart diligently. with our money, really mm-hmm. diligently. You know, my mom had a huge surgery. It cost, like, $10,000. Like, Good Lord. Whew. But S- so we saved. So, you said you, yeah. you're working, Isabella, right? I am working. I work at Highland Ice Arena. Highland Ice Oh, I think <laughs> I remember you telling me about yep. that. Okay, okay. And you've been budgeting, right? You've been saving oh, that yeah. money? Because yeah. college, that's the other thing, too, is college. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's, my God, it's so, it's ridiculously my uncle's expensive. My still working off his yeah, student loans. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's really, it's sad. It's really, really sad, honestly, yeah. how much it costs and how much money that 
especially Division One colleges make. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when yeah. really, I mean, they make so much money mm-hmm. that really there's no reason that you need to charge so much for your students. But because we have so many people in this country and so many people trying to get that education, I think that might play a part into it. But regardless, college is going is really really expensive. Oh yeah. And so for you being in high school, especially going halfway, you're actually in a really good spot. Where, I mean, you're going to rack up debt regardless going through college. Yeah. But you could at least rack up the most minimal amount of debt and know how to do it in a smart way. Yes. Even even the money that you're making now mm-hmm. at this ice cream, it may not seem like much. It's like, oh, it's just, you know, it's just a high school oh, job. Oh, I've had a few. I've been treating myself yeah. like what you were saying. Mm-hmm. I Lately, not like extreme, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I buy myself, I've been splurging just a bit with clothes, but I'm kind of like, Cutting my, I cut myself off to where it doesn't go out of hand, you know. It's, it's well, that balance. Thing. It's yeah, and mm-hmm. exactly, and it's it's good to to spoil yourself from time to time. Yeah. I think sometimes moderation. There's people that spoil themselves too much, but then there's people that yeah. don't spoil themselves as much. Oh, totally. At my all. mom. Like, yeah. That's my mom. My mom, she spends, and Nothing. I'm not exaggerating. She spends fifty dollars every year, and that includes shoes mm-hmm. on clothes, mm-hmm. if that. Mm-hmm. Like she is so frugal about her clothes like yeah and everything every sometimes it is okay though to kind of let loose a little bit yeah you know that's something that my coworker talks that's to what me i try about. and tell yeah. her because i'm the same way like i really all my money just if it's not going to to bills and debt that i need to pay mm-hmm. then it I'm just saving money for for school or for something else. You know, like, I really don't mm-hmm. use it. And I remember my coworker, or actually my manager at my other job was talking to me about this. He's like, you know, you do need to take some time for yourself and take some money for yourself. Right. Definitely. And I'm my my argument to it was, is like, well, all this is for me. I'm paying off debt. That was for me. I'm yeah. going to school. That's for me. You know? Yeah. He's like, no, that's not what I mean, man. That's just going to cause you more stress. Mm-hmm. He's like, yourself. actually, he's like, at least go buy something. Go buy one thing. Yeah. Just one. Just buy a shirt for you. Exactly. Yeah. And after, (laughs) I was like, I'm going to go treat myself to McDonald's in the dollar menu. Yeah. 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 But no, what I actually did was, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go watch a movie. I'm going to spend a movie. I'm going to go to a nice movie theater. Exactly. Just have a nice $14 for a ticket. And then I'm actually going to buy some food for $10. Yeah. You know, and then he talked me into uh, these AirPods. You, ever heard, you know the AirPods, mm-hmm. right? The yeah, wireless yeah. like AirPod yeah. things. At first, I was like, they're just wireless headphones. I don't understand what's so crazy about them. Yeah. But then I got talked into getting some. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll get some because I got a really big discount with where I work at. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, you know, I'll go ahead and get some. Now I love them. And I'm happy that I got them. I, I don't have that buyer's remorse, but that's only because I've gone for so long without being able to treat myself right. and sometimes it is good to kind of spoil yourself and treat yourself yeah. a little bit because then you realize oh okay so this is what i'm working towards i'm not just mm-hmm. working towards paying off debt all the time yeah. i'm actually working towards paying off my debt being comfortable but being able to enjoy the nice things in life yeah like, exactly like imagine being able to spoil myself more often and not have to worry about the money mm-hmm. exactly you know, like that feels really really comfortably good comfortably exactly living. yeah and that's where we're all going to right now yeah so Anyways, with that being said, I do want to bring in our third segment, which is going to be the teen's choice. Since we've been talking a lot about balance, since we've been talking a lot about money and economic class, one of those things that test balance and that test your economic stability are children. <laughs> yeah. All the time. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. None of us have children in this room, right? No, I'm no. 16. Okay. Okay. Good. I'm no 16 and... Yeah pregnant or nothing all right like yeah that. don't don't yeah don't not that's I'll, not gonna that's gonna gee yeah that's, <laughs> you got our class yeah you got a good Hard head class. on yeah, good no. head on your shoulders so i know that for the teen's choice this is something that you wanted to talk about isabel you wanted to talk about kids kids yeah i have a little sister eight years old mm-hmm. so cute and what about kids did you want to shed some light on um i think I mean, my sister, she is kind of, like, she, my mom hasn't really changed, you know? She's still a cheap Slavic mother, you know? She'll always be that way. And my sister, um, my sister asks for, like, these little toys all the time at, like, the Goodwill and stuff. And my mom's so cheap. She's like, like, my sister wants so many stupid little things, and 
she she gets really like upset and like angry and she throws fits and she feels the same way I do like you know she goes to Highland Terrace which is kind of a ritzy <laughs> elitist kind of school you know mm -hmm. where all the kids ha can just like don't have to worry about any of that stuff and can just live frugalously you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and my sister you know she's very similar to me she's she doesn't, she doesn't like it now, but she'll like it when she's older and when she's paying bills and when she can pay those bills because her mother engraved it into her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she'll yeah. appreciate it a lot more. Yep. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah so for me, I, uh, I babysit a whole lot and I have seen a lot of kids um, through my time. And um, what I've noticed is about... Um, I would say 90% of the kids that I babysit live in wealthy areas and are wealthy. Mm. And 90% of those kids have very messed up values. So true. Yeah. So true. And their parents seem nice. They seem nice. Mm -hmm. They seem like nice people. But they're doing something with their kids that isn't impressing upon them the value of money and the value of people versus things. And yep. what I've noticed is the more spoiled these kids are, they tend to have outbursts. They tend to um, hit, punch, kick, be violent. They tend to curse more because they have devices that are expensive that their parents just give them so to shut them up to repress exactly them. yep and so they're just gifted these electronics willy-nilly and they don't seem to value them and so what i do when i babysit is i give them consequences and i say if you cannot be kind you get these things taken away oh yeah and it's really interesting to see how kids will react to that um I know for me, when I was growing up, TV time, like, I got some TV time here and there, but my parents tried to use that as a consequence, I'm like, I'd much rather go outside and play with my friends. And so they're like, okay, we'll use that as a consequence then. And I was like, oh, you got me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but for these kids... <laughs> That's how my parents, or my grandparents got me yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, because for me, people were yeah. way, way more valuable. It was valuable. way more exciting to go outside and play than to yeah. stay inside and watch Yeah, TV. exactly. But these kids, it's it's crazy because they'll be like, oh, you know, I'm like, you're going to break that. Be careful. They're like, oh, it's okay. They'll just buy me another one. This is like the third one I've had. Oh, my gosh. To me, I I can't understand that. I just can't. And it just makes me so upset. And I don't really know what to do with that most of the time. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I try to tell them like, hey, you know, there are kids who don't have food. Do you understand that this is like, this is a privilege, this is a not privilege, a right. not a right. Exactly. Um, and so it's interesting to see how wealth plays out in mm. kids specifically. That's yeah, true. It's so interesting. And like the this... kids, the kids, the kids that I babysit that don't have wealth. Yeah. They are so kind. So true. Mm -hmm. So, so kind. And, yeah. It's and just... they're grateful for what they exactly. what they get. I yeah. mean, my mom works at a rec center, too, and she see, she has kids come in who haven't eaten all day, and they get, like, one, like, sandwich, like, one peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and that's, like, and they will, like, thank them, will thank my mother profusely, like, thank yeah. you. Thank you for giving me food, like crazy yeah yeah and uh, you know to touch on privilege or to touch on the things that you're getting is is privilege not a right sometimes that privilege isn't really seen especially yeah. for kids they they don't they're, they're they don't not have a sometimes they're not conditioned to be able to see that they're you mm -hmm. know it's they're when you're a child you're being conditioned for a lot of things exactly so it's just another thing that they're conditioned about mm -hmm. um and it's it's tough sometimes because on one hand it is frustrating and infuriating, but at the same time there has to be a little bit of patience and compassion because you have to yeah. realize like it's not 
a hundred percent their fault, really? No, it's the parents. Yes, yeah, the parents' fault. <laughs> yeah. Now I do believe that once you become an adult, teenager to an adult, that you start you should have the capability to start to realize where you're coming from, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, what what your privileges are, what your rights are, what you can and can't do, you start what's wrong, mm-hmm. what's right. So at that point you can't use the excuse of how you were brought up or your background yeah. because you know what's right and wrong. Yeah. You know what you can do now. Oh, yeah. You also have the ability to look around the world and grasp different perspectives. And if mm-hmm. you don't do that, that's really on you. You can't put that blame on anybody else. Right. But as a child, that's really, really hard. Yeah. As a child, you really can't, you know, yeah. it's, 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 it's tough to do that. But at the yeah. same time, you know. You want to teach them yeah different perspectives it's it's really it's hard and for Mm -hmm. the parents if the parents aren't aren't teaching them that because really that's on the parents yeah and if the parents don't want to spend time teaching that then that's a really hard thing i mean the the most one of the most important things in any relationship whether it's girlfriend boyfriend you know mother daughter you know father son anything like that is attention and giving pure attention to the other person part of giving their attention to your kid is teaching them things and talking to them and sometimes it's easy to be like i'm too tired from work or yeah i've had a long day i really you know i'm just gonna give something to distract my kid because i don't want to give them that attention but that's damaging it's very very damaging damaging. that's the thing that we like on, on economics we don't always think about that we just kind of i mean we think about kids who are really lower class with when it in terms of economics but we forget how kids who have, like, really rich parents can pretty much become, like, neglected by their parents, you know? Their Mm -hmm. parents will just give them things to kind of make up for that lack of love that they're getting. Yeah, economically and physically, they'll be sound. But when it comes to to morales, when Mm -hmm. it comes to characteristics and qualities, those might be lacking where kids that don't, that don't come from that higher class can mm-hmm. develop. Um, I know it's, I, it's, it's tough. It's, it's a really hard thing. I know for me, you know, and I remember you talked about how you, you're the oldest, aren't you? I am Isabella? The okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm the oldest too. Yeah. I got, <laughs> yeah, I got four siblings. Mm-hmm. So I grew up yeah. right off the bat. Like I remember when my brother was born, um, well actually pretty much all my brothers, except, um, my brother is actually only, the closest brother to me were only apart by by a couple months, oh, yeah. so it's not you know it's not that bad. But then my other two brothers were apart. I'm apart of from them about six years. Yeah. And for them, I always had to like right when they were born, I had to learn how to change a diaper. Yeah. And I was like five yep. or six years old learning mm-hmm. how to change a diaper, right? And I didn't want to do it because it would look nasty. <laughs> I was like, what? Why am I doing this? And I got to give them a bath. Why am I giving them a bath? Yeah. Now, I remember the worst was trying to rock your your sibling to sleep. <laughs> but that's at, a skill at si- oh it was a skill and feeding them yeah i was like i remember being six years old my arms are dead i can't hold yeah. a bait like it's my arms feel like they're about to drop you're like, six. i gotta sit there and i'm like oh my god yeah. just go to sleep now but tell me did you learn a lot of empathy from that oh absolutely <laughs> yeah, yeah and well I'll, I'll say this it's the reason why i want kids now was having yeah. to take care of my my siblings yeah and it's it's sad because it's sad because I was talking to my brother not too long ago, I think a couple months ago when we were talking, and the conversation he told me was, he's like, honestly, like, you've done more for me than really our own parents have. Mm-hmm. So I look up to you and follow you as both an older brother as a parental figure more than our own parents, which is kind of mm-hmm. sad. But at the same time, because of that, you know, and because I had that experience with him, it made me, it made me realize how important it made me realize how important it is to have kids Mm -hmm. and some of the values that come with it and for me playing that role for them kind of makes it worth it for me but at the same time I also know how damaging it could be because it's really really hard trying to raise one kid so having to do a lot it made me learn the perspective like wow if I'm gonna have kids I really 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 need to make sure that 
finances aren't going to be an yeah. issue that I already have my career that I already have a lump sum of money exactly. saved up that everything's going to be great so that my wife and my children don't have to struggle yeah. and it's another reason why I like working here and I like working with you mm-hmm. you know like Isabel you're 16 years old I love working with teenagers mm-hmm. kids are one thing I can't <laughs> I can't be a nanny just because kids are like especially like spoiled rotten kids oh yeah I got patience but that type of patience is really tough for me Mm-hmm. And I can't necessarily discipline other people's kids the way I discipline my siblings because it's yeah. because they're related to you. Exactly. And not only because that, but my you relate to my them. way of disciplining some parents aren't going to like like I grew mm-hmm. up my grandparents raised me, so I'm old school. Oh, if yeah. you messed up, you got whooped. Even yeah. my, even with my mom. Like if you messed up, you got whooped. If you didn't do something to talk back, like you got punished. Um yeah. where I'm from, like how I grew up, people are really stern. Mm-hmm. They don't beat around the bush. If they want you to do something, then you better get to it. If you don't, there's going to be something to happen. Oh, yeah. I can't necessarily have that attitude with other people's no. kids. Yeah, everyone's so soft or nowadays. Or it's going to be Ugh. really bad. Yeah, it's going to be really bad. With teenagers, it's easier because you could talk to teenagers. Yeah, it's like, don't do way. that. Yeah, and, be, and discipline them in and other ways. And they can ways. go. <laughs> yeah, they have some breaks. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes that clock will keep ticking and they'll just... <laughs> and that's when, on the teenager. Yeah, and that's when you just got to get them out. You just go, all right, you got to leave, man. You get, you get a thought yeah. in my face. I don't know. I uh, I was raised in a non-violent communication way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but. Not me. <laughs> when we had an issue, you'd start with, I feel blank. When you do blank, because blank, it makes me feel blank. You know, can you do this instead? And. By doing that, our arguments, you know, they got to the point really quick. And I, what I do with the spoiled kids is um, I give them consequences that actually make them think about their actions. Mm-hmm. And So not just the traditional, I'll just go sit in the corner. No, because like that this. doesn't work. That doesn't, it's, it doesn't teach them anything. Yeah. Well, I, even with spankings yeah. and physical stuff, like, after a while, it's like, oh, I'm just going to get a spank and I can take the pain. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Um, it's hard to be creative, though. I don't know. <laughs> be creative I with, don't know. The, I'm, yeah. with I don't know. the disciplining. It is, yeah. it is it's tough. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Well, not only that, but you also have to cater to it to every child because every yeah. that a particular child is going to take their punishment exactly. different than this one. Like, for me, yeah. I love... Like like we talked about just a minute ago, going outside. Like yeah. if you took my toys away, if you took video games, TV, I was <laughs> okay. like, all right, that's fine. I'll, can I still go outside? Can I still you know go spend the night? So let's just, exactly. All right, then I'm chilling. Mm-hmm. I'll just go play toys and video games at their house. Then mm-hmm. like it was an issue. But as soon as you said I couldn't go outside and I couldn't play outside, like, and I couldn't oh, play with my friends. No. I was like, man, and they wouldn't even bother to take the video games or the TV away because I'd just be, I, I just I couldn't stand it. But my brother, one of uh, my other brothers. He he did not like to go outside. If he he would stay inside and watch TV and play video games the entire time. Mm-hmm. So if you took that away from him and forced him to go outside, that was his punishment. Right. You know. <laughs> so it's like it's different with each kid. Exactly. Like you got to treat. And it I like that challenge. Oh, you do. You That's welcome. Good. That's what I live for. <laughs> oh man. That's good. Yeah. You're yeah. fit to be <laughs> taking care of children. I know. That's super wonder. mom yeah. and super nanny. Yeah. yeah. You gonna be feeling good. Yeah. Good. That's a lot of patience. Good. Okay, I want to. Yeah, when I have my kids, I'm gonna love them. But they, those kids too, fast. the kids that are you know wild, mm-hmm. um, I love them, and they're nuts. But I love them, mm-hmm. and they respect me so much. I all I have to say is their name, their full name. I use their full name, <laughs> real stern. And I'm like, it works. Don't do that. And then they're like, okay. But I think a part of that is a byproduct of you having to get because you're getting paid to do that yeah you're giving paid to give them your undivided attention right exactly. so because you're giving them that attention yeah they're picking up on it a lot more and well and i asked respect you. i asked the one girl because we had an issue like a couple weeks ago and i said have i ever gone back on a consequence mm-hmm. she said no <laughs> and i said exactly this mm-hmm. is no different mm-hmm and she knows I'm business and so it's funny because her mom went out of town for like a week and she was so distraught about it and I remember um, her mom and I were both we both showed up at the same time to go see the little girl and 
she runs she just seen me later that day or like earlier that day she just seen me she runs straight past her mom who she hasn't seen in a week mm -hmm. jumps straight up into my arms and is like oh man i love you oh, man. and her mom's like whoa <laughs> <laughs> well hopefully that's gonna so, teach the mom to kind of you know pick it up it's like the nanny yeah. my kid ran to the nanny before me good lord <laughs> all right so before we go ahead and wrap up because we are we are getting to the end here isabella i want to ask you how because you're the oldest I you're am. still in high school yeah mm -hmm. how is it having to help take care of your siblings how how is it for you how do you view that well, I only have one sister, but... Um, no, that's all you need. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, I... It's kind of... I mean, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes it's hard, because my mom, she... She expects me sometimes to, like, you know... She expects me to watch my sister, and she says that's what families do for, for each other. And I agree with that 100%. But sometimes, uh, you know, things come up and I'm like wanting to hang out with my friends or do something or I have something planned with someone and, and like, I have to like tell my friends, like, I can't, I'm watching my sister again, you know, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, I love my sister, I love watching her, I love everything, but it's, it's annoying sometimes. It's a lot, <laughs> yeah. And how old is your sister? Eight. There's an interesting gap between me and my sister. We're mm -hmm. eight years apart. And it's kind of funny because in my family, how it works is I have two cousins on my dad's side. And uh, they're both eight years apart. And I'm eight years younger than um, their youngest. Their youngest. So mm -hmm. it's like eight, every eight years Increments kid is eight. born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's easier because Sounds like a they're, family you know, thing. they can yeah. make enough money to have another one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Eight years to save up <laughs> for the next one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think my, my youngest sibling, me and her, are about, I think, seven years apart. But it's different because we've had kids between. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. been kids between then, so... I remember when I was, like, when I was eight years old and my sister first kind of came into the picture, and, you know... By the time you're eight, you kind of have more of a grasp on things, and yeah. I kind of felt, this sounds stupid, but I felt, like, jealous, because my sister mm -hmm. was getting all this attention that, like, originally was always mine, mm -hmm. and, like, that was the one thing I had, like, even when I didn't mm -hmm. have a ton of money, mm -hmm. I had, like, my parents' love, and I don't think I ever <laughs> lost it or anything, it's not like I lost it, you know, eight-year-olds are immature, and that's how they feel at the time and I think I was sometimes kind of mean to my sister I'm not gonna lie like hmm. I know it sounds but at eight you were able to know that that's exactly how you felt yeah if you were younger you'd still act out but you might not necessarily be able to put it into those words you yeah know what I mean that's interesting and the yeah. kids that I babysit they're two years two years two years apart <laughs> perfect perfectly <laughs> Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, there's definitely a, an older kid kind of a, like, well, but, like, aren't I good enough? <laughs> yeah. <Sometimes laughs> Why do you need more? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's tough because when you're the oldest, you're kind of like the guinea pig. Mm -hmm. Exactly, um, so yeah. Like the experimental kid. Exactly. And then you got to pick up the slack for your parents if you have younger siblings. Yep. Yeah. Um, and it does, the, the attention thing will get to you. It does get easier. Like, for me, oh, like, yeah. it got easier as more and more of my siblings started to come in. Then I was, yeah. like, kind of like, all right, whatever. Then I got used to it. Yeah. Um, and especially favoritism, because I, I don't know how, if every single parent has favorites, but my parents definitely Probably. do have their favorites. Um, so that favoritism plays out. But e it's weird. Even as you get older, you kind of, like, accept the favoritism thing and yeah. it's not such a big deal anymore it's like mm -hmm. alright I'm not the favorite but I mean whatever <laughs> like you you get conditioned to kind of accept it you get conditioned to kind of accept the attention that your younger siblings will be getting as opposed to you mm -hmm. you get used to it yeah, yeah. You, you just get you know and there's there's a certain humbleness that comes with it um, oh yeah so it's yeah it's definitely it's yeah a, it's, it's, it's a lot it's it's kids are are difficult they're, they're very complex. They're more complex raising a child than, than people yeah. realize. My brother's actually, uh, his girlfriend is pregnant right now. And they're very young. They're very, very young. They're fresh out of high school. 
Oh. Yeah, so he doesn't have anything together, neither does she. Oh. But at the same time, it is a blessing whenever a child's brought into the world. Oh, yeah. So I'm trying to like talk to him to be like, hey, you it's a blessing, but... <laughs> Instead but, of freaking out. Yeah, like... it just, <laughs> but you have to understand, and I've been talking to Manazim, I was like, but you have to understand how difficult it's going to be. I don't think you understand how complex yeah. raising a child is. I got a taste from it just from having to help raise... All you, all you guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, it's it's very, very, very difficult. It's not an easy thing. Even one child is expensive, yeah. complex. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of things that go into it. So, you know. 100%. I, I, hope, I hope he's going to be okay. Anyway, that will wrap it <laughs> up for today's episode of Richmond Real Talk. I want to thank Isabella and Marlena so much for joining me in today's episode. Thank you. Y'all thank, were you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Any final thoughts or things would you like to share? Before we go ahead and cut it? No. No? No, that's it. Everybody, learn how to save and budget your money. Save money, yeah, exactly. Save yourself a struggle. Yes. Don't worry, you ain't got to dress. It's okay to shop at the Goodwill. (laughs) No shame in it. And then when you do have money, you can go shop at Ross. (laughs) Elevate a little bit. All right, good night, everybody. Thank you.